All right. <clears throat> All right, so this is the first problem. They give you uh, members A, C, B, and they're asking for, they want to know what's the factor of safety. Okay, so they give you the um, ultimate uh, tensile strength, which is 480 MPa for this member, uh, BC, and they want to know the factor of safety. So you're obviously going to have to find out what's the allowable stress over here. Once you find the allowable stress over here, you can find the factor of safety. Because the definition of the factor of safety <coughs> is equal to the ultimate uh, tensile stress over the allowable stress. Okay? So we have to find the allowable stress in this member, and then we can find the factor of safety, given these parameters. Okay. So first we're going to have to draw a free body diagram. So we're going to have to draw a free body diagram of this whole thing. Okay? Because we want to know we want to know first like what kind of force you're going to get over here because they give you P is equal to 16 newtons, kilonewtons. So once you know the force over here, you can get uh, the stress over here, the allowable stress over here, and then you can find the factor of safety. So let's draw a free body diagram. So the free body diagram looks like this. This is member uh, AB, ACP, whatever this point is. D actually, so it's ACD. All right, so we have this force going down right here. This is P, which is equal to 16 kilonewtons. We have a force over here. What is this? This is a two-force member, right? So the force is going to be along the member. So this is going to be in tension, right? So which direction is the force going to be on this free body diagram? So you have this member over here, right? This is member CB. So this is going to be in tension, right? Do you guys see that it's in tension? If you're pulling this down, this has to be in tension, right? So this, this member's in tension, so this has to be equal and opposite. So this has to be pointing in this direction, okay? So this force we're gonna call uh, FCB. This is FCB. Uh, so this, therefore, this is FCB. And what kind of reaction force do you expect at A if you disconnect it at A? There's, there's one more force over here. Huh? And this isn't a two-force member, right? There's a force here, a force here, and there's a force here. So, what kind of reaction? There should be something that goes up, right? And then, and this is, we'll call this AY. And what about, there's one more component, right? This has an X component, so there has to be an AX. So, AX. Uh, okay, so this is a complete free body diagram of A, C, B, and uh, C, B, okay? So they give, you, they give you dimensions, they give you 480 millimeters, so we're going to have to obviously sum the moments. 480 millimeters, and then they give you this distance from A to the force P, this is 600 millimeters, okay? Right? So um, we want to know what this force is. Once we know the force, we can get the allowable stress, and then we can get the factor of safety. So what, what do we want to do if we want to find this force, FCB? Sum, yeah, sum the moments at A. So we want to sum the moments at A to be zero, taking counterclockwise to be positive. So you have 480, right? And the reason why I'm not changing the units, because these are millimeters, they're going to drop out. Okay, so it's 480 millimeters times FCB. This is millimeters times FCB, right? That's positive, and then you have minus 600 millimeters multiplied by uh, P, which is 16. Oh, let me go out of the way. 16 kilonewtons is equal to zero, right? Those are the only two forces. So if you want to solve for uh, FCB, this is known, this is known, this is the only thing that's unknown. So FCB, you can't even write this. FCB is equal to 20 kilonewtons, okay? You can just move this over and divide by 480. So now that you have the force, 
you could get the stress in this length, all right? I said this was an intention because you can see if we pull this down, this has to be intention. So if you want the stress, sigma uh, CB is equal to the force FCB over the cross-sectional area. Well, they give you the cross-sectional area. They give you the width of this member and the thickness. The thickness is six millimeters and the width is 25 millimeters. So it's over the cross-sectional area of CB. So the stress CB, so uh, sigma CB, is equal to the force which we just found. It's 20 times 10 to the third newtons all over the cross-sectional area. And the cross-sectional area is W times T, which is uh, 25 times, let me just put it, it's 0 0.025 meters multiplied by the thickness, which is 0 0.006 meters, okay? So you can get the stress sigma CB, which is equal to, this is allowable stress, which is 1, 133.3 MPa. Okay, so this is allowable stress. Now that we have the allowable stress, we can get the factor of safety, right? Because the problem gives you the ultimate uh, tensile stress. So the factor of safety is equal to the ultimate stress, which is, uh, what was it, 480 MPa over 133.3 MPA, right? And this number is unitless, right? Because the MPA is canceled. So you get a factor of safety of 3.6. So it's allowable over? No, no, it's, it's ultimate over allowable. Oh. Factor of safety. Uh, let me ask you something. Is it a safe design if your factor of safety is one or less? No, it's not. Yeah, you, you never, you want, you, you want, you always want a factor of safety much greater than one. Because if it's one, it could break, you know. So whatever you're designing will probably break. <coughs> so you will always want the factor of safety to be much greater than one. Okay, with that said, thanks, Bob. Uh, So this is a side view. All right, so this is a side view, right? And what they give you is the diameter of this pin over here. Okay, so 
previously we weren't considering the diameters, but in this problem they give you the diameter of the pin, so you have to consider it now. So they give you the pin diameter is 10 millimeters, okay? And they also give you uh, the ultimate shear stress as 150 MPa, and they give you the ultimate normal stress, tensile stress, sigma u, which is 400 MPa. So we're obviously going to have to use any information they give you. And they also give you the factor of safety, which is uh, 3.0. Okay, so they give you all this information. So uh, they want you to find the largest force P that could be applied at A. So this is unknown. Right? We have to find out the largest force P that could be applied at A. And they give you all this information. So you're going to have to find forces at B, right? Because we don't care what's going on over here. There's forces here. But we don't really care what's going on here. Like before, we're going to have to draw a free body diagram. Find the force over here. Uh, once we know the force over here, we can find P, right? This is the only unknown what we're looking for. Okay. So um, let's start with drawing a free body diagram. Now that you guys got this picture, I don't think we need it anymore. I just wanted to draw a video. Alright, so let's draw a free body diagram with this whole thing. Free body diagram. Right? So you have this member over here. Is this going to be in tension or compression? It's a, it's a two force member again, right? There's only two pins, there's no other force on it, so it's a two force member. Is it in compression or tension? Tension. It's in tension, yeah. So there's an arrow down and there's an arrow up. So we'll call this F, B, D. Doesn't matter what you want to call it, you can call it anything you like. F, B, D. Right, so that's a two force member, and then you got this member A, B, C. Okay, so there has to be an equal and opposite force over here. This is at pin B, so there's a force going upwards, right? And this is F, B, D, right? There's a force going down over here at A, which is P, which we're looking for. And what reaction do you expect at C? Huh? Yeah, down. down. Yeah, that's the right direction. It doesn't matter if you draw it up or down, but down's the right direction, okay? So this is, um, we'll call this whatever, FC, right? And is there an X component at C? No, right? Because if you, if you did put it in there, it's fine, it's not wrong, but if you sum the forces in the X direction, it's zero, okay? So um, this is a complete free body diagram. So there's a pin here, here, wherever, wherever there's a force, there's a pin, okay? So these are the conditions they give you, right? So the shear stress always applies for the pin, the pin diameter. Uh, the pin, sorry, what am I saying diameter? So this, this applies for the pin. This, this is a normal stress, so this applies for the length, okay? This is a length, the, the pin is this, this little dot I think, okay? It, it has a length, it has a diameter of 10 millimeters, okay? So what I was trying to explain before, since this is going to be in tension, you have to consider the smaller cross-sectional area, okay, in order to find the force, because that's where it's more likely to break, okay? So with this, we can't do anything, right? Because we don't know this, we don't know this, we don't know this, right? So we have to go to the other constraints. So we have this, and we have a factor of safety. Well, if we have this stuff, right, what can you get? You could get the allowable stresses, yeah. You guys just did this for home. <laughs> so you know the factor of safety is equal to, we'll start with uh, the normal. So it's sigma u over sigma allowable. But the sigma allowable is, we'll just call it uh, sigma bd, right? Because it's for member bd. And uh, the factor of safety for uh, the shear stress constraint is tau uh, ultimate over tau B, D, okay, right? From here, what are we gonna be able to get? Once you find the allowable stress, we can get the force, we can get F, B, D. So we're gonna have two F, B, Ds. There's gonna be a larger one and a smaller one. You're gonna have to sum the forces, uh, sum the moments over here. Once you get this P, you're gonna always have to take the smaller P. Because I'll explain to you in a second, the larger P will make it fail, okay? and. Let's just work through the problem so you guys understand what's going on. All right, so we have the factor of safety, it's three. So we want to find the allowable stress, so we want to find sigma BD. So 
So that's equal to sigma u over fs. So that's equal to 400 MPA over 3, which is equal to 133.3 MPA. I could have sworn I just wrote this number. They must like these numbers. Okay, so this is allowable stress uh, for the normal stress in that link. And then we want to know the allowable shear stress in the pin. So the allowable shear stress in the pin, tau BD, is equal to tau ultimate over the factor of safety. So that's equal to 150 MPA over 3, which is equal to 50 MPA. Uh, all right, so we have uh, the 50 MPA and we have the 133.3 MPA. So now that we have the stresses, the shear and the normal, what could we do? I, I just told you guys before. So now we know, we know this, the allowable stress, is the force over the area. Well, so we know sigma BD is equal to the force, which is F uh, BD over the cross-sectional area, ABD. Right? But you have to be careful. Since this is in tension, you have to use a smaller area. Okay, that's what I was trying to explain before, uh, before our recitation started. Okay, so we also have to find uh, the force from the tau constraint. So tau BD is equal to FBD over the cross-sectional area, ABD. Right? These are going to be different, um, the cross-sectional areas. Okay, the for we're looking for the force, so you want to rearrange this for the force. So we have F, B, D is equal to uh, what? It's just sigma B, D, stress times air. So A, B, D, right? So now you have to be careful which area you're using. You're not using this cross-sectional area, right? Because this is a thickness. Because they give you the diameter of the pin here. This area is much larger than the area over here, the cross-sectional area over here. Um, so what that looks like is this. This is the area we're interested in. Okay, so we're interested in this area. Because it's more likely to fail here. Because <laughs> you're pulling it, right? If, if it was in compression, if this link was in compression, you would only consider this area, right? Because if there's two forces here, it doesn't matter. It's not going to break here. This isn't being stressed at all. Okay, the, the, the force application is right here, so this doesn't matter. Okay, so this is what you have to consider for that link. So um, we want the force, we want these two forces, the answers we get is. Uh, Okay, so we, we know the stress is 133.3 MPA, so it's 133.3 MPA, right, which is 10 to the 6, I'll just leave it in MPA, it doesn't matter. Okay, so it's 133.3 MPA times the area. So what area are we going to use? We're going to use this area. So they give you this, this distance as W, this distance as the thickness, and they give you this distance as the diameter of the pin. Right? So if we want this cross-sectional area, it's just W minus D multiplied by T. Right? So that cross-sectional area, they give you W as 18. So it's 18. Let me actually put it in the right units. So that way you guys will get it. So this is times 10 to the 6 PA multiplied by 0 0.018 meters uh, minus the thickness, which is 0, 0 0.06 meters, multiplied by, um, no, that's not the diameter of the pin, sorry, that's the thickness. The diameter of the pin was 10, right? So it's 0 0.01 meters, multiplied by the thickness, which was 0 0.006 meters, okay? So the force you get for this constraint is equal to okay, so the force you get is 6.40 kilonewtons okay? so this is the force you get, 6.4 kilonewtons right? well there's one other force we need to get that we could sum the moments and get that force P okay? so the other force we're going to get 
they're, they're not equal, okay? So I should have called this something else, but um, this is from the normal constraint, the, the stress from the normal constraint, and this is for the shear constraint, okay? So let me erase them. So now we want that other force, okay? So do you guys understand what's going on? Okay. You need the docker. Uh, you need the docker one. I know, it's, it's, it doesn't write well on. I tried using every marker I possibly could find. I mean, people won't be able to see them, but you Maybe this is better. I know, yeah. You got like four over there. Yeah. Huh? It's like four right there. Oh, uh, was a brand new? Yeah. I should have probably used this board. No one wrote on it. Oh, brand new. Alright. <laughs> okay, so let's let's use this. Alright, so we want the other force. Oh, much better. Alright, so uh, FBD is, is is equal to now we're getting a force from the shear constraint. So it's tau B D times a cross-sectional area, A B D. Right? Now you have to be careful. Now we're going to use the pin. So the cross-sectional area of the pin is pi over 4 d squared. So we want the force FBD is equal to um, tau, the, the allowable shear stress, which was 50 MPa. So it's 50 times 10 to the 6 PA multiplied by the cross-sectional area, which is pi over 4 times the diameter, which is, uh, what was it, 10? So it's 0 0.01 meters squared, okay? So the force you get from this constraint is equal to 3.93 kilonewtons. Okay, so we have these two forces. So it's 6.40 kilonewtons. So you have this force and this force, right? So we want to sum the moments over here to see which force P we could take, right? We're going to get a larger one. Obviously, if we use this number, the P is going to be larger. If we use this number, the P is going to be smaller. That's the number we're going to take, okay? Because if we, do, if we find the P from this, it's what's going to happen? Instead of me telling you, what do you think is going to happen if we use this constraint, this uh, uh, sigma constraint? What's going to happen to the pin? It's going to shear off, right? Do you guys follow what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not buying it. You're saying that if uh, we use a larger force, there's a chance that the pin will just like... Yeah, it'll break. It'll break. break. Yeah, it'll shear off. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not complicated, but I want to make sure you guys understand what's going on. So, okay. All right, so um, we don't need this stuff anymore. So the only thing that's important is to find uh, the force P from this force and this force. We have the three-body diagram. So now the only thing that's left is to sum the moments at C. Okay, so let's sum the moments at C. With that said, I don't even think, it's, it's not even worth it to find this force because this, let's just find it anyway, so I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so if, if you start off using this force, you sum the moments, you get, you need these distances. Uh, they give, I didn't draw any distances in the top three. Okay, so this is 160 millimeters, and then they give you from the force FBD to FC is 120 millimeters, okay? So we want to sum the moments. So if we're summing the moments at C, what do we get? We have 120 millimeters multiplied by FBD, so it's minus, because it's going clockwise, FBD. Well, we just found FBD. Oh, I'm going to leave it like this so I can just list the answer. That's a good idea. Um, plus, it's 120 plus 160, what is that, 280? So it's plus 280 millimeters multiplied by P is equal to zero, right? So you're gonna get two P's, right? So first we're gonna use 6.40. So the P you get for this, if you plug in 6.40 over here, the P you get 
is two point uh, seven four kilonewtons. Okay, so it's two point seven four kilonewtons, and then the P you get when you use this force. So when you stick this force into FBD, the P you get is 1.68 kilonewtons. Okay? So you want to take the smaller P. You always want to take the smaller force. If, if they were asking for a diameter, you're gonna you're gonna want to take the larger diameter. Okay? Because you, you don't want anything to break. So if, if you did happen to use this force, so if you hung a, a 2.74 kilonewton force over here, this pin will break. That's what I'm saying. This pin will break. Okay. The, this, this won't break. The, the member won't break. It's what, what will break is the pin. Okay. I, I want you guys to understand that. Any questions? Yeah, how do you know it's going to break at that? I'm, I'm okay, gonna so right. So if you if you go back, right? If if you if you want to find the stress in the pin, right? So you have this force. Where was it? This was. Which one was for the? Okay, so if we use this force, right? If you took this force divided by the cross-sectional area of the pin, what's going to happen? So if someone calculated for me. So we have, if we want to know the shear stress in the pin, and you use this force, so um, the shear stress was equal to 6.4 times 10 to the third newtons over the cross-sectional area, which is pi over 4 times the diameter squared, which is 0.1 meters squared. What number do you get? What's the shear stress you get? It should be greater than the allowable stress. Is that tension of uh, this? This is 10 to the third. Sorry. 10 to the third. So what do you get when you plug and chug? No one has a calculator? 2.74. But did you plug and chug? You did it? Oh, so don't try to do it in your head. Let me get a count. I can't do that in my head. I'll just try to calculate it. Huh? Someone did it? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm doing it now. Wow. Okay. Someone says it's in physics room 112. Uh, no, it's here. It was changed. Yeah, it's here. Okay. Alright, so, um, no, it's okay. So it's 6.4 times 10 to the 3rd over pi over 4 times 0 0.01 squared. All right, so did you guys get this number? It's eight, let me see. 81.5 81. Uh, MPA. Yeah. Okay. So what was the allowable stress? 50. 50, right, exactly. So the tau allowable, or tau BD, whatever we called it, BD is equal to 50 MPA. So what's going to happen? If this is larger, it's going to break, right? So it's what what this is saying is the shear force is allowed up to 50 MPa. If it goes over, it's it's broken, you know. So the pin the pin's going to look like this. What's going to happen is it's just going to break. That was a bad like example. I wanted to like you guys understand what I'm saying. It's just going to break off. So you, you could pretend this is a pin. The force is like this. It's just going to break. So that's what's going to happen. So that's your way of checking. You can backtrack and check. You guys understand now? Okay, I hope so. Okay. That that's your that's a good way of checking to work the problem backwards too after you solve it. All right. Cause if if you look in the solution manual or something, they're not going to tell you that. That's something you have to learn from taking this class and understanding. You know. No one's going to tell you that. They're just going to be like, okay, you take the smaller P. Why do you take the smaller P? Because that's what's going to happen. It's going to shear off. So you have to, that, that's some stand stuff. 
If, if, if you're not lucky and you have a TA like me, then you're going to have to learn yourself. Okay. So, um, all right. So, next problem. I think I'm only going to get to this. Yeah. What's your question? Should you uh, Yeah, just don't worry. I'll take it after. Okay. Okay. So, um, this problem. That's terrible. No one's going to be able to see the video. I should have used this. I thought it was just a board. Oh. Alright, so for this problem, they give you uh, this block and it's loaded. It's loaded in tension. They give you this force P, which is 2.4 kips. Okay? And they're, they give you in the problem two things. They give you the shear stress, the ultimate shear stress, which is 1.3 KSI. And they give you the ultimate tensile stress, sigma mu, which is equal to 2.5 KSI. And they're asking for. Uh, a value of theta, okay, so this is theta over here. They give you this dashed line, and then they give you this uh, diagonal cut, and the angle between them is theta, okay? So they want to know, um, okay, so they say they want the value of theta for which the factor of safety of the member is maximum, okay? So what that tells you, it's in code words, what that means is the factor of safety for both constraints have to be the same. Okay, so that's something you have to understand. Okay, so um, they give you this, right? So we're, we're gonna have to sum the forces again, like, like every other problem, you have to sum the forces. But anyways, you, you have this, these are the two conditions they give you, while well, you have something else also. So you have the factor of safety is equal to uh, sigma u over the allowable. Okay, so the allowable, we don't know. Okay, so we'll call it sigma allowable. And we also know this condition too. The factor of safety is equal to tau ultimate over tau allowable. Okay, so these are two equations that we're going to need to use. Right? And the only thing we know is the ultimate. The ultimate uh, normal stress and the ultimate shear stress. Okay, we don't know this, we don't know this. They don't give you the factor of safety. Right? So, but there's things you can find, right? What could you find in this problem? You could find something, right? Okay, that, that's all they gave you. Well, what you can find is you could find the uh, regular stress in tension, right? So if you drew a free body diagram of this block, So what does it look like? You have this force P over here. So this is P, which is 2.4 tips. What do we have down here? If it's in equilibrium. 2.4. Yeah, it's just, it's just in tension. It's a two-force member. That's what you can think of it. So P is equal to 2.4 tips. Okay, so this is a free body diagram, right? And we know the cross-sectional area of this, right? So the cross-sectional area is 2 inches times 1.25 uh, inches. So um, if we want to know the stress in this section over here, that dashed line is this section over here. So we want to know the stress over here, we could get that, okay? So 
what should I call it? I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna call it sigma t for our intention, okay? So the stress is equal to the force over area, so it's p over a. And the cross-sectional area is two inches times 1.25 inches. So it's equal to p, which is 2.4, right? So, so what this looks like, do you guys understand what this looks like? So basically, if I cut it in the middle over here, we'll call this point A, B, and this is C. So if we're cutting it here, this is A, B, C. If we cut it at A, B, C, right? This is loaded over here. This is P, nothing changes. This is 2.4 uh, kips, right? And what's happening? if we cut it over here. There's a stress, so stress is a force over area. So you would expect a force all over this cross-sectional area, right? So this is what I'm calling sigma t, right? And it's acting all along this area, not just at the corners. The way I drew it was at the corner. Do you guys understand what a stress is? I mean, that's the first thing you have to understand. So this is what a stress is. It's just a distributed force over the area. So we're looking for sigma t. That's what I call sigma t over here. So uh, sigma t is 2.4 uh, times 10 to the third pounds over the cross-sectional area, which is 2 inches multiplied by 1.25 inches. Okay? So sigma t is equal to... Nine hundred sixty psi. Okay, so now we know the stress. So now that we know the stress, we're gonna have. We want to know ultimately what is this angle theta that we can have, right? So we're gonna have to do. You guys learn transformation of stresses, right? When you draw the triangle. You guys know what I'm talking about. Okay. So, anyways, I'm gonna keep going with this. Okay. So, um, good. So we we found the tensile stress. So now that we found that, we could draw the the we could draw a triangle over here and sum the forces. Okay, so let's do that. So now if we drew a free body diagram of this section, A B uh, E. Now we want to know what's happening over there. So we want to draw a free body diagram of that. So we have this piece over here, right? So we're, we're going to have stresses here. We just calculated this stress. You could put it as a single uh, arrow. So we found sigma t, right? What do you expect in this section over here? This theta. But what do you expect in this diagonal section? There's going to be still a normal and a shear stress. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a stress, okay, so there's a normal stress, right? So this is sigma, and there's also going to be a tau. Yeah, there's going to be a shear stress. So let me look, is it going to be up the incline? Yeah, it's, it's up the incline, okay. I just didn't want to write the wrong direction, okay. I wanted it consistent with my notes. Okay, so now we're going to have to sum the forces. So this is tau, which I just drew in. So you have a normal stress and a shear stress along that diagonal, okay. So we also need the areas because we want to sum the forces. These are stresses. We have to turn them into forces. You guys understand? Okay. So I'll call this a stress diagram. It doesn't really matter what you call it. These are the stresses and we want the areas. Okay. So what's the area? So this is A. This is a regular area. This is theta. So that means this is what? A cosine theta. And this is what? A sine theta. You guys agree? Okay, so these are the areas. So we want to sum the forces. But we need to know something about this. If this is theta, do you guys all agree that this is also theta? Do you guys agree? Okay, so this is theta over here. So if you want to sum the forces along the normal direction, we're going to get equation with sigma. If we want to sum the forces along the tangential direction to this plane, we're going to get uh, an equation with tau. And they both depend on this angle theta, which we're after. 
okay? So we want to sum the forces along uh, the sigma direction first is equal to zero, taking that direction to be positive. What do you have in this force balance? You have sigma times A, right? The corresponding area is A. It's acting along this area, right? Minus what? I guess this is the last one. Uh, what, you guys finish this force balance. Can that be a tan theta? Tan? No, there's no tan data. Oh. So, 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 so basically, this isn't, we're ignoring tau, right? Because tau doesn't act along this direction at all, right? You could think of it as this. Let's say, let's say the plane was flat, sigma would be up, and tau would be this way. Right? So if you sum the forces in the y, this doesn't contribute to it. Do you guys understand? So, so all this is is being tilted, right? So this isn't in the force balance, tau. We're just summing the forces in the sigma direction. So it's sigma a. The only other force that contributes in this direction is this. Okay? So it's uh, sigma t times what? It's cosine, yeah, cosine of theta, right? So it's a cosine of theta. Well, before I wrote, write that. So the, the, the area it's acting on is a cosine theta, right? A cosine theta. And then you have to slap this onto this axis. So you have to do another cosine of theta. Do you guys follow? So, so this is a force, right? This is a force. But this is a force acting along this direction, downwards. That's this term over here. This term over here is the force acting down. Then we have to slap it onto this axis over here, which is the cosine of theta. Do you guys follow? You guys? Or are you just saying yes? <laughs> I was there one time. Okay, I hope you guys understand. All right, so this is equal to zero, right? So we could solve for, this is the allowable stress, which we want to know uh, in the second part. So we, we don't want to know it in this part. Okay, so we don't know cosine theta. So we could, the areas drop out. Notice that this is equal to zero, right? And each term has an A. So the A's drop out. So you have sigma is equal to sigma t cosine squared theta, right? So this is another equation, equation three. And then we could get a fourth equation by summing the forces along uh, the tau direction. So let's sum the forces along the tau direction. Uh, okay. Alright, summing the forces along the tau direction. So you have tau times A, and then what do you have? Minus, you guys know? Uh, so it would be sigma tau. Okay, sigma t, yeah, that's right. So, so first, make it into a force. So it would be sigma t sine theta, right? Oh, and no, that's after you slap it. What it it's it's going to be the same. It's just going to so be sigma t. Sine theta? What? A so cos, yeah, exactly. A cosine theta. And then it will be a sine theta? No, there's no a sine theta oh, so, again. So it's already a force. Now you want to slap it onto that axis. Yes, it's sine. You're right. Yes, yeah, sine theta. Okay? So that's this component over here. Okay? So this is equal to zero. So you have tau is equal to sigma t uh, cos theta. Again, the areas drop out. Sine theta, right? So you have equation four, right? So now we, now we can solve for the unknown. Right? Because we have these two, right? We have a relationship. This is unknown, unknown. Uh, this is unknown, unknown. But these are the allowable. So maybe I should call this ALL. -L, and this is ALL. -L, right? So we know this in terms of theta. And we know this one in terms of theta. So we could rearrange this since these two have to be equal, right? Because they ask for. They say find the value of theta for which the factor of safety of the members is maximum. So that means when it's maximum, this factor of safety has to equal this factor of safety. That's what they're telling you. 
Okay, so we no longer need this. So I'll erase this and this. So we could rearrange this. So set this one and two equal to each other. So you have sigma u over sigma allowable is equal to tau allow, uh, sorry, tau ultimate over tau allowable, right? But we know what these two are, so we could plug those in. This was three and four, so you could plug it into that. And then you could get a relationship, because ultimately at the end, they gave you these two to start with. I shouldn't have erased it, but they gave you uh, tau u is equal to 1.3 ksi, and they give you sigma u, which is equal to 2.5 ksi. Okay, so we know these two. Well, now we know these two in terms of theta, so we can solve for theta. You guys follow what we did? All the math junk we did? Okay, so, good. So, um, let's get a, a ratio of these guys. So, I like to put the bigger number on top. So, I'm going to move this to this side and move this to this side. So, you have uh, sigma u over tau u is equal to sigma allowable over tau allowable, right? So we know what these are, which is just equal to sigma allowable, which is, uh, where is it? It's over here, it's sigma t uh, cosine squared theta over tau allowable, which is sigma t cosine theta sine theta, right? So that's a relationship. Um, this is what we have so far. So what could we do with this? This is just algebra from this point on. So it's just tan theta? Yeah, it's tan theta. Yeah. <coughs> That's right. Okay. Do you guys see that? These sigma t's cancel. Uh, this cosine and this cosine cancel. You just get one cosine on top. So you have cosine. No, oh, it's cosine inverse. It's, it's, it's it. Yeah, it's one over tan. Yeah, exactly. It's one over tan. So um, you have sigma u over tau u is equal to uh, cosine theta over sine theta. So this is actually one over, one over tan theta. So you have sigma u over tau u is equal to one over tan theta, right? So we wanna, we wanna solve for theta. We can move the theta, uh, tan theta over here, and then we could uh, move this over here, and then we can solve for theta. You just flip them both. Yeah, we, we, that's what we're doing, we're going to flip them. So you have tan theta is equal to tau u over sigma u, right? Okay, so now we want to solve for theta. So theta is equal to the inverse tangent of tau u over sigma u. Well, we know these two values, so it's, it's the arc tangent of tau u, which is 1.3 over 2.5, which is equal to 27.43. Huh? 27.43. Yeah, 27.5 degrees. Right. 27.5 degrees. Okay. So that's your answer for part A. So we have to go through all that math just to find that. And then for part B, they asked for the factor of safety. So now that you know this, we could get the factor of safety. How? We could either use uh, the equation I just erased or this one. You could solve for you could solve for tau allowable, tau allowable or sigma allowable because we know what theta is, and then we could just get the factor of safety. So I'm gonna write down the other equation because when I actually it doesn't matter they're the same value. So all right. So now what you want to do is we solve for this. This was 960, right? So don't need this anymore. So now for part, this is part A. So for part B, they want the factor of safety. So for part B, they want the factor of safety. So now we want to know what tau allowable is. So tau allowable is equal to uh, 960, right? It's sigma t, which is 960 times the cosine of 27.5 multiplied by the sine of 27.5. <laughs> so tau allowable is equal to what do you get for that? I actually didn't do that. I didn't uh, calculate it. Can someone calculate it real quick? So, so you get a number? Uh, 393. 393. Point two. Point two? Okay. 
uh, it's PSI. Okay. So now we want the factor of safety. So the factor of safety is the tau ultimate over tau allowable, right? So they gave you the ultimate is 1.3. So it's 1.3 KSI over uh, 0.393 KSI. So the factor of safety you get is 3.31, okay? So this is for part B. And that should check if you can check it. Okay. All right, so let me do one more problem just to get you into chapter two. So I didn't, like, because I, I guess I lost some time. I'll just run through this real quick and then I'll, I'll pick up next time for chapter two. This one's not as long as this. It's two seconds, I promise. Okay, so this problem is 2.2, right? And you get you they have a cylindrical rod and it's loaded in tension. If this force is P, this is P, so P is equal to two kips. P equals two kips. And they give you uh, the diameter of the rod. So D, oh, or they don't give it to you. They don't give it to you. Okay, so they give you this length over here. This is L, which is equal to 5.5 feet. Um, and they give you the material. They give you the Young's modulus is equal to 229 times 10 to the 6 PSI. And they give you delta is equal to 0 0.04 inches. Okay? So they want to know the smallest diameter of the rod. So they want to know what this D is. Okay, that's for part A. So for part A, all you have to know for this chapter, in chapter two, uh, well, it's not the only thing you need to know, but it's one of the things. You need to know that delta, this is a deformation, how this rod's going to deform. So delta is equal to PL over AE. Okay, so this is an equation you have to memorize, right? So where are we going to find the diameter in the area, right? So we want to solve for the area. So A is equal to PL over delta E, right? I just switched them. So the area, the cross-sectional area, this is pi over 4 times the diameter squared. We're looking for the diameter so we can move this to the other side. This is PL over delta E, right? So this is just algebra. You can solve for the diameter. So D is equal to the square root of 4 PL over pi delta E, right? So that's the equation you get when you move the 4 over and the pi over. So um, the diameter you get after you plug in all the values, so, so you know what P is. P is equal to 2. Uh, L is equal to 5.5. You have to convert this into inches. Be careful. So it's 5.5 uh, feet multiplied by there's 12 inches and 1 foot. So you have to plug in uh, this 66 inches. Okay, so L is equal to 66 inches. Uh, deltas, they give you in the problem is 0.04 inches. And uh, the Young's modulus they give you is 29 times 10 to the 6 PSI. So you can get the diameter from this. So the diameter you get is 0 0.38 inches. Sorry, 0 0.381 inches. Sorry. Okay, so we get the diameter, and then for the second part, they want to know what the stress is. Okay, the stress is just force over area. You guys know how to do that. Sorry that I kept you five minutes or ten minutes late. Okay, so the second part is just to find sigma. So sigma is equal to P over A. And P is equal to, they give you, so it's 2 times 10 to the third pounds over the cross-sectional area, which is pi over 4. We just find that we found the diameter just before. So it's 0.381 inches squared. Okay, so you could get sigma is equal to 17.5 KSI. All right, that's it. Uh, I'll upload this if you want to look ahead since I didn't get to the, the other problems I wanted to get to. Uh, enjoy the weekend. You can't? No, you can enjoy the weekend. Just enjoy the weekend. All I gotta do is study. Yeah. <laughs> Taking two Yeah, this.